and a lot of people have been caught off guard by the rise in oil. Is this a worrisome development for you? First of all, it's always wonderful to be here. Uh, in our business, that's the one constant is worry. That's, <laughs> that's what we are supposed to do all the time is, is, is worry. Uh, but no, when we think about oil, it's still, you know, in historical perspective, it's real price isn't that high. We're producing more. Our policies are designed to get more out of the ground. The dollar has strengthened, uh, which, you know, at the margin, particularly since we're now an exporter, it reduces demand. You've seen uncertainty in some foreign countries. That's put some pressure on the oil price. But we look at gold. We look at silver. We look at copper. There's no real price pressure there yet. There's been some bounces in iron ore and things like that, but it's not a major concern. So you go back to your sort of first point to just round it out. Uh, it's kind of, you know, a snoozer, mm. you know, <laughs> in terms of both the market and things that we're looking at. Generally speaking, uh, the charts for a lot of things look a lot better than I think when you were on last, which was about a month ago. Tech stocks very close to their all-time highs, in many cases at new all-time highs. Some of your favorites, Visa and MasterCard proxies for the consumer, I have a chart here. They're basically at their all-time highs. Does the uh, action that we've seen in the last few weeks give you some confidence that, that what we saw really starting in early February is not, the, is not yet uh, the start of some uh, new bear market? Well, so the last time I was on, which actually was nice because it was a Friday afternoon, everybody was worried and we're like, this whole thing smells very, very like a bottom. Mm. And uh, mm. I got on here, we talked about that. So now there's complacency on the other side. So outside of sort of the strength in Visa and MasterCard, we talked also about, you know, the Russell. It's the only one to make new highs. It failed today. If you look at IWM, mm -hmm. there's some technical divergences. We look at the utilities and interest rate. That hasn't been able to bounce. Uh, the industrials relative to the S&P, relative to the NASDAQ. So there's a fair amount of warning signs out there. But as I said, it's nothing to particularly to get worried about. I always say that, again, more money is lost anticipating something happening than rather than waiting for the confirmation of that happening. We all want to be smart. We all want to sell the highs. We all want to buy the lows. That's dangerous. Look for a confirmation of that high or some validation of that low, and we haven't seen either. So that's why I said it's kind of a snoozer. So we have this chart here that Scarlett brought up of the Russell. What does confirmation mean? That would mean if it breaks to an all-time high, would that be confirmation of? Well, we made new all-time highs today, and then we closed below the high of, of that previous high. If you look closely on that, if you yeah. blow yeah, we'll it up and you look it. at yeah. Because you can see that it did kind of roll over right, right. there. Yeah, and, and so that's just sort of, you know, one little data point for today where it did it all by itself. You want to see markets strong and in, in sync together. So we just look for the weight of the evidence, and the weight of the evidence right now is blah. Now, <laughs> I, I hate to say that, it, you know, nothing Not more exciting, but to take risk, just to take risk because you're there, that's what the guys at DraftKings are going to be talking about later. Oh, that's what that's for. This is business, investment, investor's money. When there's things to do, you do it. When there's not things to do, then sit back. So, okay, but bleh is not really an investing strategy, right? I mean, you have you got to come to your clients with more than that. So what, it's like, what, is there anything that is getting no, you excited right now? Not trading is often a really great strategy. The business is about risk reward. If you don't see the risk reward in your favor, then there's something not to do. And that's the hardest thing for most people to do when they're sitting in front of the screen or they're looking in markets or they're getting a management fee, mm -hmm. they feel obligated to do something. No. If you don't feel that the scales are tilted in your favor, then don't do anything. But that block. is an important trading strategy and that is worth a lot of money for people. But block can last a long time, right? I mean, block could be well, the case it, for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Generally speaking, more like a couple of weeks than a couple of months. You know, I always say in this business, a day can be a very long time, right? A stock gap's lower on news and it turns around and rallies. We trade a lot of different things. It's a market of stocks. I always say it's not a stock market. Sometimes in the aggregate, but you saw in all your things when you started out, 
there's individual movements, but in the aggregate right now, as you saw, you, again, you were just talked about, oh, the S&P's plus or minus, it's six basis points today. Mm. That's not uh, a period where you're gonna have a risk reward. The last time I was on and we said, okay, things are really lining up here. This is an opportunity from a probabilistic nature to take a buy. We're not there yet on a probabilistic nature either to say this is a really good top or this is a point where we're gonna be accelerating. To me, we're closer to the highs if we break the January 26 highs and there's confirmation on technically and economically, then that's something you might wanna go with. But we're not anywhere, well, we're not, I don't wanna say not anywhere near, but we're we reasonably we're far up way, yeah. away from that and we're certainly much further away from the February 26 low. So that's the accordion and it's not that exciting.